So today in the third episode of the SNC show, I have with me one of the leading producers in the Nigerian music industry. He is an alumni of the University of Abuja, where he graduated with a degree in computer science. He received his diploma in audio recording engineering from the Audio Institute of America in 2004. He won the award for the best music producer of the year at the 2012 Headies. He has produced several monumental hit records for various artists that went on to and continue to define Nigerian music at various points in time, such as Nito C, Dare, Two Face, Sound Sultan, Sasha, Shank, Kwam Won, F. Shaw, Alaye, The Late Kefi, Timmy Dolphus, Inyanya, Nice, Shei Shei, Vibanj, G to the Guitar Man, Banky W, and Ikichuku, to name a few. Now, that was a mouthful. In 2014, he launched his record label, Vibachi Records. I hope I got that right. He's also one of the three judges for the reality television music competition show, Project Fame West Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me the incomparable T.Y. Mix. Welcome to the show, T.Y. Mix. Hello. How are you? I'm very well, actually. Happy New Year. Oh, same to you. Yeah, it's quite interesting. (laughs) Beginning of the year. Yes. So how did you ring in the New Year? Um... Well, you know, you know how it is. You know, usually, you know, towards Christmas, you know, end of the year, beginning of the year, lots of food, lots of um, partying, lots of um, hanging out with family, and you know, it was nice. It was nice. So, safe to say that sometime like February, you'd be trying to lose weight. Or <laughs> well, I was very conscious <laughs> oh, about okay. you know what I ate. You know, okay. but it was good though. That's cool. That's great. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much for agreeing to do the show. Thanks I'm, for having I, me. Yeah, I'm really thank happy you. to have you here. Thank so you. as I always start off with the show, mm-hmm. I always ask the guests that I have to tell us what is their passport name. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, for, <laughs> so for people okay. who do not know who um, T.Y. Mix, mm-hmm. can you tell us a bit about who? Okay, my yeah. passport name is uh-huh. uh, Temitayo Ibitoye. Okay. I'm from Mondo State. Okay. Um, I love music. I love um, I love people. I love being around happy people. Okay. You know, um, I love what I do. And um, what? You know, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> that's yeah, that's, so that's quite straight. You come from a family of six? Yes, I come from a family of six. Okay. I'm first. Okay. Um, yeah. Were you like a really good older brother? I mean, are, are you a good older brother? Right now? Yes. Well, I think I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think I'm working at it uh, to be better every single day. That's you true. Know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm the first one as well. So. Oh, interesting. Yes. I feel like my brother thinks I'm like the worst sister ever, but it's okay. He'll live. <laughs> no, um, I don't think my siblings think that of me. Well, you're lucky you. <laughs> um, so apparently you've been producing music for almost 18 years, is that yeah, right? Yeah, about that. I okay. started quite early. Quite early. Mm-hmm. So can you take us through your musical background? How and when did you start producing? Well, it all started, you know, uh, many, many years ago. As fun, you know, for me it was fun. It was just um, something I was doing to just while away time because mm. I really like music. You know, I didn't think I was going to be producing music, so I started out playing musical instruments. You know, I was in church. What you instruments know. did you play? I started playing the drums. Okay. Then from the drums, I started playing the bass guitar. Nice. Then I started playing the piano. Oh. You know, um, after I played the piano for a bit, I, I had a friend at the time who owned the studio. Mm. And every time I go to his place, you know, I saw the things he did, and it was very, you know, interesting to me. So I mm-hmm. told him one day that, dude, I want to learn this thing, and that's how it all started. Are you still in know. touch with this friend? Yeah. Oh. Very, very, very. Does the friend have a name? Yes, his <laughs> name is Daniel Jones. He's actually in the states. Oh, you okay. know, yeah, he's based there with his family and everything, but okay. he's doing well. That's but he's more in the gospel scene mm. now, you know, and doing well. Okay, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I read somewhere that um, Daniel is the one that gave you the name T.Y. Mix. Yes. How and okay, why. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing my research. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice, yeah. nice. Yes, he was actually the one that gave me the name T.Y. Mix. Um, at the time, there were two of us mm. learning at the same time, you mm-hmm. know, that Daniel was putting through how to produce and how to mix and things like that. Mm-hmm. And um, for some reason, you know, every time he gave us something to do, I guess I excelled at I excelled yes. at it, you know. I did <laughs> I did well, you know. So one day he was just excited and called me TY Mix and and he stuck. Really he stuck this and well it's been like that since then actually. Like he just came up with TY Yeah, Mix. he just you know, random. You know, just like yeah. someone is yeah, Femi yeah, and you yeah, just yeah, say yeah. Femo yeah, 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 you know yeah. and that's it. You okay. Know. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So, do you still play the piano? The yes, I do. So it's like it's not, it has. Yes, I it do. has come with you. It's not like you lost. No, some. no, I didn't lose it. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe the bass guitar I lost a bit, you know. But uh, but I, I can still find my way around. Okay, well, <laughs> that's, that's good to know. Um, 
So mo- moving on to music production, uh-huh. what fascinates you the most about music production? What was mm. it that made you, I guess, because I guess, what, what, was mi- what was it that made you excel when Daniel would give you tasks to do? Because I think for other people, they may just like lose interest. Mm-hmm. But what was it that kept you going? Well, I, I just like the difference. I like the in-betweens mm. um, from the conceived idea to the finished product. Mm. I enjoyed every part of in-betweens, you know, where you put the sounds together, uh, record vocals, edit vocals, mm. add effects to it, do things that were not originally in the song, do things that even the singer did not even originally sing. Mm-hmm. You know, I just liked the process, and okay. I think it was just very intriguing to me. Mm. That's interesting. Okay. Now, how do you work on a musical project? Can you take us through that process? How do you go about, let's say, I come to you, I'm like, you and if mm-hmm. I want to sing a song, mm-hmm. how do you go about working on that with me? Well, it depends. Sometimes, you know, you have artists who already have songs written. Okay. So they just want you to add some music to um, an already written melody mm-hmm. and lyrics. So the artist has written the melody. Sometimes it's like that. Okay. You know, so what you now do is you put sounds together, <coughs> like add the music to it and, you know, just bring it to life, basically. How do you know how to add the... Well, so is it about, is it about hearing uh, the melody? Already? Yes, from the melody, melody can guide you in okay. a lot of ways. You okay. know, from there you try to know what chord progressions to use, what genre of music do you want mm-hmm. to, what kind of elements do you want to include or involve in the song or mm-hmm. add to the song, basically. You know, so that's one way to go about it. The other way is sometimes I come up with a beat, you know, or come up with an idea, and um, the singer just finishes up. You know, um, so it's, it's either one mm-hmm. of those two, really. Okay. Do you, did you write songs as well? Um, yes, but um, that that's not really my strong yeah, point, course, yeah. you know. But what I do most times is I co-write, okay. you know, because most of the productions I do, at some point, we always tell them to either change one line or, you know, do something else mm-hmm. or, 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 or paint a different scenario because music is drama, is mm-hmm. storytelling, you know. So sometimes, you know, an artist might come with a story that is not really sitting well with the type of music you've actually produced, you Mm -hmm. know. So you might suggest, okay, why not tell a different type of story? And And then what about situations whereby the artist's lyrics is just whack? (laughs) How do you go about, oh, it's just, (laughs) no, really, like, you know. know. (laughs) (laughs) So I ask that question not to really just be funny, but like when an artist comes to you and they're like, oh, I want you to put a melody, put a beat to the song and you see the lyrics and you're like this is crap yeah How'd i know you i know what thing? you mean you see the thing is writing is actually um is 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 is, is a special type of craft mm-hmm. you know you have to be gifted to be a good writer mm-hmm. Put, putting words together is not easy at all you know so what i do most times when i feel like okay you are not that's not your strong point because you have good singers mm-hmm. who are not good writers mm-hmm. you know and you have good studio recording artists who are not good performers, you know, so you can't be good at everything. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I have a team of songwriters, you know, I'll always suggest to you, you know, should you need a songwriter, you know, I can always hook you up with Mm -hmm. somebody. And if the artist decides to remain stubborn, Mm -hmm. (laughs) then I don't know. We'll just find a way around it. You know, it's either we pull through uh, with the project or I back out. (laughs) One has to just give in. And do you mind talking about the songwriter that you work with? Um, they're they're host of them. Okay. They're host of them. They're a bunch of them. You know. Um, I ask uh, that question because I feel like a, l- a lot of people don't know who yeah. Nigerian songwriters yeah. are. Well, the thing is, some artists double as songwriters. True. They yeah. write for themselves mm-hmm. and write for other people. Yeah. You know. Um, and some are just purely songwriters. songwriters you yeah. know. Um, in the past, I've worked with people like uh, Omolara, okay. Omolara, who has written songs for people like Asha, mm-hmm. and she's done a, quite a bit. You know, in that. Um, in that space, I've worked with people like Bino. Bino doubles as yeah. an artist, mm-hmm. you know, as a songwriter. Mm-hmm. You know, I've worked with Clem. Clem is, you know, he's written for quite a number of Nigerian artists and a host of other people. Okay. Yeah, that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel like it's good, important that we shine light on the people. Yeah, you're yeah, 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 right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so right. in terms of the production software that mm-hmm. you use mm-hmm. to create songs, mm-hmm. can you tell us the ones that you use? Well, um, right now I use Logic. Yeah, Logic is um, um, is a production software mm-hmm. where I don't, I don't know if you know, <laughs> know so much about her, mm-hmm. but but Logic is where everything is done. You know, okay. you know, from from um, sequencing, 
to sound recording to vocal recording to edit to mixing and you know sometimes mastering you know um yeah logic so logic is your go-to yep okay because i asked for some people like logic. pro tools um some people yeah like fruity loops to be honest with you eh, i have never pro tools have always been so difficult and complicated to me i don't know why i don't know why. i have tried a few times you know i remember then when i tried to do sequencing on on uh, Pro Tools, mm-hmm. it was just so tough and difficult, and everything was just looking scattered. <laughs> then a few people started saying that no, Pro Tools is best for mm-hmm. audio mixing, like you know, just mix, yes. not to actually mm-hmm. sequence, mm-hmm. you know. But I don't know, I just like having one stop shop for everything, yeah. you know, and Logic does it for me. Yeah, because the consistent thing that whenever I talk to people is like for them, they feel like there are certain tools that they just it works better for their workflow. Yeah, so they just like use, yeah, you know, yeah, one, yeah. yeah. But before I started using Logic, I was using um, Cubase. Okay, yeah. Cubase, and it was brilliant. Why Very did you brilliant. like? But why did you switch? Because you feel like Logic is more all like no. Capacity. Well, no, that's 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 not the reason why I switched. The first, re- the main reason why I switched was because I switched uh, my operating system. Okay, you know, I was using Windows before. Okay, then I now moved to uh, Mac. what's it called Mac. Oh Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 you know, I'm so sorry. Like Mac, I just See, we trust don't me. vibe. Trust me, that's the best thing. That's Anybody keeps saying that. Trust me, like yeah. I, don't, I just, Mac is so Tr- sorry, Mac. Like just so complex for me it's to not. use. Like I have an iTunes and I have an iPad and all these things. But when it comes it's to like not. using an operate, oh, it's not. See, every professional should work with a Mac. Work with a Mac. So if you're working with the Windows, you're not a professional. Well, it's just because of the s- stability most mm. times. You know, I like, ah, I can't remember the last time my system crashed. Mm. You know, those were regular occurrences mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. with Windows, you so know. Windows, you got to fix that, yo. You know? <laughs> but I'm sure, no, I'm sure the, like, the newer, newer models, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure they fix mm-hmm. most of those things. But, but just... I'm stuck to my, okay. to my Mac. Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, good plug for Mac. <laughs> um, but, but just to back- backtrack a little, in terms of the genre of music or the sound that the artist is trying to achieve mm. do you find that logic is able to help you get that sound because i feel like some people like go to different softwares mm-hmm. based on the sound mm-hmm. they're trying to mm-hmm. um create mm-hmm. but do you feel like logic is the best regardless of the well genre? the thing is that logic gives you a very good platform mm. so you can use different plugins within mm-hmm. the logic space mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know um there's um um uh, there's synthesizers, synthesizers mm-hmm. like uh, Slinth. Mm. There's um, um, quite a, quite a number of them, you know. So I have a lot of plugins that I use, okay. but within the Logic environment, and it works perfectly well for me. Okay. Now, what influenced your move from Lagos to Abuja? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I used to be based in Abuja. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to be based in Abuja. Um, well, at the time I decided to move, I was doing more business in Lagos mm. than Abuja, you know. Um, and I felt like Lagos was a new territory for me, mm. you know. Um, um, yeah. And funny enough, I didn't, I didn't plan to move totally. Mm. What I wanted to have, I wanted to have a workspace in Lagos because mm. I was having studio challenges. Like every time I had to work on a project in Lagos, you know, you have to start looking for studios. Then eventually when you find a studio... Sometimes they're not satisfied with service, mm. you know, power, you know, and a lot of things, mm-hmm. you know. So I just said, okay, let me create, like, have my own workspace here in Lagos. And eventually, after the workspace now, you know, as a young man, it's where the business is you move <laughs> yeah. to. So I just moved. Well, mm. your workspace is pretty fancy. Oh, I'm thank pretty, you. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if I want to come and blow, I'll come, <laughs> I'll come here. Thanks um, a lot. Now, in terms of sound, mm. you're welcome. In terms of sound... Um, is there a difference between Abuja and Lagos in terms of making music? Is there like an Abuja sound or a Lagos sound? Hmm. Someone, someone, someone told me to ask you that question. Hmm. So that's yeah, I need to actually think about it. Um, I'll say yes. In what way? But you see, my yes is a bit... Um, well, my reason might be a bit insignificant. Okay. Because I feel like Abuja people are more experimental. You know, I feel like Abuja people are more, they're not under the type of pressure. Mm. Lagos artists are under so much pressure and that makes them, everybody's, everybody, everybody's looking for a formula that works. So if you find one formula that works for one artist, everybody wants to replicate that same mm-hmm. sound. And that's what you find in Lagos. Mm-hmm. 
But in Abuja, people just do music for the love of it. People just, you sleep at night and wake up in the morning and something sounds in your head and you just go and record it. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. It's, it's genuine, it's, it's, it's straightforward. But then again, the problem is Abuja music industry doesn't have the type of attention mm. that, Lagos has. that Lagos has. So you find out that even those who are in Abuja who want to try and crossover or try and be like a Nigerian artist because mm-hmm. when you talk about Nigerian artists mm-hmm. 95% of them are from Lagos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So for those who are in Abuja who are doing well in Abuja and they want to um, move on to being a Nigerian artist mm-hmm. they still find themselves being influenced by the sound of Lagos because mm-hmm. they feel like okay Lagos is where it's you know right. hey is a sound that is accepted as a Nigerian sound mm-hmm. you know so yeah. that's why I said is yes mm-hmm. and no really mm-hmm. you know. as a producer do you find that frustrating sometimes like a, like an artist comes and says Ty I want you to recreate Kini Big Deal yes yes how do yes. you how do yes. you manage that I find it super frustrating <laughs> I do because. I'm a producer. I'm a creative person. I like taking risk. <coughs> Excuse Sorry. me, please. Mm-hmm. I like to. I like. I like. I like to be fresh. Mm. You know, I, I can't do it alone because I am not an artist. I'm a producer. I still need the effort of an artist. And sometimes when you and the artist are not on the same frequency or the same wavelength, there's always a problem. Mm. You know, um, artists are sometimes. You know, they're. They're. I don't know whether they're scared, I, and I can't blame them because the whole process of you know of um, producing music and promoting music in Nigeria is, is very expensive. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these people use personal funds, mm-hmm. you know, to do it. So everybody wants to play safe. You want to be in that space where you think that, okay, you're not too far from what he's selling mm-hmm. and you're not too, you know, you just, you know. But it's very frustrating to mm-hmm. answer your question, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you tend to work with a lot of artists that are willing to experiment and try different things? or I love to work with such uh, those type of artists. Okay. You know, like one of the most recent that I've done and I've really enjoyed working with her is Timmy Dolphins. Mm, you know, she's, yes. she, she's, she's, she has her own sound and mm-hmm. she's not scared to try out things. True. You know, she, yeah. in fact, sometimes, Timmy, because she plays the keyboard very well, you know, and she plays, I think she plays other instruments as well. Sometimes she comes and she plays some chords like this. I'm like, are you sure this is going to work? You know, and yeah. she runs some really nice melodies over those chords and is, is perfect, fresh and clean, you know. So speaking of Timmy Dollface, mm-hmm. um, you produced her song "School Your Face." Right? Yes, yes. What was that? What was that like? How, how did you come up? How did you come up <laughs> School Your Face? Timmy Dollface. You know, we started that project. That project almost lasted a year, <laughs> but it was Timmy's fault actually. You know, we came into the studio. Um, I hadn't worked with her before, so I invited her over to come to the studio, and she came. I just said, "Let's vibe. Let's just work on something." So we started like a framework for that song, and. Um, for some reason, we left it for almost a year, over a year, you know. And one day she calls me back and says that, ah, that she's been thinking about this song and she thinks that, you know, this song is very fresh that so we should finish it up. And she came back into the studio and we finished it up, you know. And th- that was it, you know. We have we have quite a number of things in common when it comes to the creative process, you know. We are free to experiment, you know. We, we, we are not... We're not we we think outside the box, mm. you know, most times, you know, and I enjoyed the process we had, the creative process we had. Now, just to go back a little, you said that you created a framework. Mm-hmm. How, how did that come about, you know, for people who are like, what does that even mean? <laughs> 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 like, how okay. did you come up with the name okay. to your face? Well, was she the, came up, she came up, up, she came up with that okay. name. So did she tell you that, that T.Y.? I have a song called School Your Face. I, I think, no, the name came last self, you oh, know. Okay. But I think, what, what, how did we start? Okay, I started just making sound. I started, okay. I started playing. Mm-hmm. I started, you know, um, making the beats, mm-hmm. you know. And she was there. She would tell me, oh, she likes that sound. Oh, she's not too comfortable with that sound. Okay, let's try it like this, you know. So eventually we had like a, a an, like an eight bar, 16 bar mm-hmm. um, 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 sequenced track. Okay. And, um, she listened over and over again and started coming up with melodies and things. And sometimes, okay, we got the melodies first, got some lines first, mm-hmm. then other lines we just chop mouth. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. hey, you know that kind of thing, you yeah. know. And uh, yeah, that was it. So that's like the framework yeah, I was okay. talking and about. And then we you know. built it. Yeah, from then them. we built it from them. Okay, mm. that's really cool. Yeah. I love that song. It's one of my favorite songs from Timmy Dolphins. Um, now, speaking of TY Mix, yeah. do you have a, is there a particular sound that you say 
this is a TY Mix production, or are you just very experimental? Because people, some, some people say, uh, I don't have a particular sound, I just do whatever. But this, is there something that when people hear that, like, this is a TY Mix production, apart from your name, that is a TY Mix? Yeah, you know, I've tried to, because I've heard that question a couple of times, you know, and I've tried to think about my work and I think, do I really have a particular sound? And the answer is <laughs> no, I don't. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't. I, I'm just, you know, it depends on my mood. It also depends on what I'm listening to at that mm-hmm. point in time. Mm-hmm. It depends on what my influences are at the time. It depends on what the market is saying or the mm-hmm. industry is saying. Mm-hmm. You know, what is, uh, you know, music is not just about, you know, the sound of music itself mm-hmm. is um, influenced by a lot of things culture, um, trends at the time, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of things like that, you know. So I don't think I really have. I don't know. Maybe you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like your your um your production, even just production on your side, I feel mm. like it's very contemporary. But then you're also mm. able to surprise people. Like I said with Tim, when I when I heard Timmy Don't face this song, I was like, oh. I try to because you need to have that surprise yeah. element. No, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, you just become very predictable. Yeah, right? yeah. I try to. Yeah. And I hate artists that, that you know try to put me in the box. Mm. It's very annoying. So do, do, do you like <laughs> tell them that I'm going? I'm going to experiment and if mm. this if you can't let me be ty mm-hmm. mix then we can't work or no no okay. i don't i don't go that route okay. you know some some of these things are things some of them are you 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 don't say them mm-hmm. but you you find a way to just find that equilibrium between mm-hmm. you because at the same time you want the artist to be very comfortable mm-hmm. because at the end of the day they're going to be the ones to perform the song they have yeah. to be comfortable in whatever it is they're going to be performing mm-hmm. um so you just find that, for me, communication is very important when you're in the studio. You know, um, I need to know where you're coming from. Most times before I work with you, I like to listen to previous recordings you've mm-hmm. done. I like to listen to the kind of music you like and you love, and why do you love those those you know that particular mm-hmm. sound? Is it the is it the melody? Is it the beat? Mm-hmm. Is it the lyrics? You know, so I try and gather all that information mm-hmm. about you. So even when I'm doing something for you, I don't do something that is just totally strange and you're staring at me like, okay. <laughs> 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 Have you ever had that experience? <laughs> No, no. Um, <laughs> I think I'm too like smart for that. <laughs> like where, 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 where did they go? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come no, on, come no, on. No, 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 no. Okay, cool. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be funny. Um, well, and also just go back to the artists that you choose to work with. Mm. What If I could ask you three different things that you look for. Well, I want someone who is not scared. Someone who is creative. You know. Um... um before, if you had asked me this question a few years ago, I would have told you that I need someone who is a very good singer. Mm. But now I'm really not interested in you being a super singer. Mm. You know, um, why is that? Because I feel like generally, globally, you know, singers are being watered down. Mm. Like music is being watered down in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that an average singer plus a good writer can make a better record sure. than a very good singer plus a bad writer. Mm. That's very true. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Because I, I realize that a lot of people are being... Um, a lot of people listen to lyrics now. It's not just about the beats. Mm-hmm. They want to know what you're saying. They sure. want to know what the story is about. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I can mention a lot of artists who, in my own opinion, are just average singers. Mm-hmm. You know, but we love them. Yeah. So um, if I have both, like a very good singer and a very good songwriter, that would be that would be fantastic. <laughs> but in the event that I don't, yeah. I will still work with an average singer and a good writer. Okay. <laughs> well, those who are listening know, so you are hearing. <laughs> you don't have to sing very, very, very well. Um, now you don't work solely as a producer. You also engineer as well, right? Mm-hmm. Now is there a reason why? Well. I think for, from from the way I was trained, mm-hmm. you know, um, you produce a song and you mix a song, you engineer your song, you record your vocals, you know, and you get it done till the final product is ready. You know, so I, I got used to that. Mm-hmm. But later, later, much later, much later, um, as the industry well, grew and uh, developed, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, areas of specialization started That's coming it, yeah. up, you know, so you find mixing engineers mm-hmm. you find mastering engineers you find people who are just vocal arrangers mm-hmm. you know who are very good at it and um yeah so but some t- I, I do everything but sometimes 
I decide to because some projects when you listen to them over and over again, you're just you don't want to hear it again. Sure. <laughs> you're just sick of mm-hmm, everything, you know. Mm-hmm. So at that point, I'll just give it to a, a, another mixing engineer to just mm-hmm. go and do it. And sometimes it works well, okay. you know, because it's like a fresh brain, fresh mind, mm-hmm. you know, fresh perspective. Yeah, perspective. Who are some of the mixing engineers that you work with? Um, but quite a few of them. Um, there's Light on that I don't okay, know. Lighton, yeah, yeah Light is one of the best engineers sure. I know. Okay. Um, there's uh, Mr. Daz. There's um, who else? You okay? I've not really done anything serious, serious. Really. There's this guy is called Swaps. Okay, Swaps. They're good. They're good. Yeah, yeah. I've done something with them, but not not a lot. Okay. Um, I've worked with um, um. Uh, what's his name now? This Baba in the game. Zeno <laughs> 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 uh, Foster. Oh, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I've worked with Zeno Foster that's before. Okay. And, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. and for those who do not know T.Y., you've mixed and mastered songs such as Davido Skelewu. Yeah, mixed um, and mastered Skelewu. Don't Tell Me Nonsense Don't t- by yeah. Divanj. Uh, Aye. Aye. Surulere by, by Dr. Sid. Yeah. You have Mercy by Praise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Gobe. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Interesting. you've done your research very well. You know, too, uh, I have to like come here and I'll be oh, your, talking Your brain is smoky hot, too. <laughs> 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 uh, and I'll be thinking, too, what's your baby color? <laughs> you be like, my friend, my friend, I'll be good, be good, be good, be good. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to happen. <laughs> Those are red carpet type of questions. Uh, you, know, you know, I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so this, this was like a red carpet. Uh, yeah, so I have to like represent myself. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and I'm moving on to your career as mm. T.Y. Mix. You mm. worked with Nito C earlier in your career. Mm-hmm. What was that experience with him like? It was beautiful, you know, because at the time we had no worries, yes, to be yes. honest. You know, we just came to the studio and just did music. <laughs> we weren't even concerned about if we sell, if it won't sell. Um, you know, we just did it for, you know. How did you even meet on this with him? He came to my studio. Oh. He came to my studio in Abuja. Then he had he just got back from the states, you know. And he just he came to my studio. We tried one or two songs together, and, and that was it. Hmm. You know, that was it. So that, that you just started making music. Yeah, it was just you know you know you. Know, I don't know. You can't be too serious about mm-hmm, this thing. Mm-hmm. That's the honest truth. Sure. You know you can't, and there are no rules to it. Mm. You know. There are times where we've recorded daytime. There are times where we've recorded at night. There are times where we've recorded in the afternoons. Mm-hmm. You know, just you know, it just depends on the energy and vibe that both of you have mm-hmm. at the time. And mm-hmm. we really, really had a very good vibe. Okay. You know. Now, I would be silly not to ask you about the top tracks that you've you know produced for Nature C, such as Kini Big Deal, Tony Montana, Ten Over Ten. Mm-hmm. How did you go about creating those? songs what well, what inspired kini big deal what inspired tony montana what inspired 10 over 10 can you take us through that process ah oh i don't know but <laughs> <laughs> you understand? They, they, they were different things mm-hmm. you know um some of them were a function of um okay like for 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 kini big deal for instance uh, we had been in the studio for maybe like seven hours and I was trying out different things. I was just trying out different sounds. And, and nothing just seemed to work. You know, and... So Nito had an event, you know, house party. A friend was, you know, had a baby dedication, you know. So we went there and, you know, we, st- we were there for about an hour or, or two. So after everything, I was very sad, though, because I was like, ah, how can you just spend time in the studio and, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing just, what kind of day is this? You know, how did I wake up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, you know that kind of thing. You know, so after like two hours, I told myself, "Nito, let's go back to the studio." And we went back to the studio, and you know, in in less than twenty minutes. Wow, I'm serious. In less than twenty minutes, I had like a, an eight bar um, sequence of ten of it. Uh, no, of um, okay, Big deal. That's for the beats. Yeah, you know. And when we heard it, both of us felt good about it, and I shut down my system and we went home. Really? Yeah. So what I did was I, I did like a three minutes loop of mm-hmm, the same mm-hmm, thing, mm-hmm. just bounced it MP3 format, um, put it on the flash drive for him, yeah. and he went and he listened to this beat for over a week, you know, and calls me up someday and told me that oh, I have something for it, <laughs> and that was it, yeah. you know, and um, 
for 10 over it's 10. Very, very go on. Did, mm. you, did you now know that you had a hit right? Did, at what point did you know that? Funny enough, this I song didn't know. See, you didn't know. To be honest, uh, you don't know these things. True. Even when you think that... Because That's they're true. good songs. Some songs are good songs, mm-hmm. but they don't become hit songs. Hit songs Some songs are even great songs, but they, they're not hit songs. Mm-hmm. You know, um, For a song to be a hit song, there are so many elements. Like, that you think? I was going to ask you that question, but since you're hitting, you already... <laughs> <laughs> I think trends. Mm. Um, um, how well is promoted? Mm. You know, um, what are people's feelings at the time? Mm. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. If you do a song, for instance, that is a very good club song, club hit songs, you know, it has all the lyrics that you know you want, all the things you want to l- hear at two a.m. in the morning mm-hmm. when you're tipsy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and guess what? If the country is going through a very bad time, such that you know there's um, terrorist attack or you mm-hmm. know people are even scared to go out at night, mm-hmm. clubs are not doing well. See, the song won't. It, there's no how. Mm-hmm. You know, so I feel like there, there are lots of things that even are, we, are, are, are not within our control mm-hmm. that can either make a song a hit song or not. not. You know. So what I try to do is and worry myself about is I just want to do a good song. I want to do a record that. Once I'm done with it, if I listen to it five years from now, and I listen to it, I'll be like, oh, I produced it. Oh, not bad. Mm. Sounds good. So, at the time, we just felt good about it, but mm-hmm. we didn't know it was going to be a, a, hit, a hit song. You know, The first person that thought it was going to be a hit song was Dari. Ah, we'll get to Dari yes. later. So, we had finished recording, yeah. and we asked Dari to come to the studio. Okay, he came to the studio one day, okay. and I played it for him. And Dari listened to it, and Dari said, T.Y., this what? is a big song. <laughs> this is a hit. Mm. And I said, are you sure? He said, ah, I know what I'm saying. It's a guy. Yeah. It's a hit song. Yeah. I'm like, ah, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> and that was it, you know. Humility. Um, so for, for 10 over 10. Yeah, 10 over 10. We had finished recording almost all the songs on the album. In fact, we had finished the album. And one day he came to the studio. And, and funny enough, that was the first song I had produced on Logic. Ah, yes, so yes, because yeah, yeah, I was, I was switching from from Cubase to Logic, mm. you know. So he now said, "Let's try one." After just say, "Let's try one more song," <coughs> I said, "Okay, no problem." I, I was, I, I even told him, "I said, ah, guy, there's this new software that I've been playing with, mm-hmm. oh, and blah blah, mm-hmm. and I like the sound and everything." He said, like, "Okay, no problem," and that's how we recorded ten over ten. We recorded ten over ten, and I think it was "Carry Your Shoulder." Yeah, there's another song called yeah, "Carry Your Shoulder." Yeah, we recorded mm-hmm. both at the same time, about mm-hmm. the same time. Um, that was it. And yeah. wait, what, how, how did you come up with the melody for 10 over 10? Were you just like, just playing the chords? And... I actually made the beats. With NATO, most times I create the beats first. Oh, you okay. know, but we're all in the studio at the same, same time, time, you know, with the vibing. process, you know, yeah. vibing, you yeah. know. So as I'm maybe playing the chord progression, mm-hmm, he's mm-hmm. also thinking of the melody mm-hmm, or something, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and that's how it was. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, I, we, we can't talk. We, we cannot not talk about Tony Montana. <laughs> 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 so, how uh-huh. did you know uh, bad pass? Well, Tony Montana had an original. Okay. The one with the um, um, the band mm-hmm. is the remix. You yeah. Know? So the original, I think, is the same process. You know, we actually recorded it here in the studio. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, what happened? Uh, the original was good. It was good, but. It was a bit laid back. Yeah, there was something missing. So what happened was, we had done that. And we had left the studio, everything. The song was ready. So on my own, one day I just came to the studio in the evening. And I decided to revisit the song without any... Because sometimes Nito can be difficult. <laughs> he will tell you that, ah, no, 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 don't, don't change this. Or no, change this. Or, yeah. you know, sometimes... You know, so I just wanted to just do it by myself mm-hmm. without any influence yeah. at all or distraction. So I came to the studio and I started tweaking what we had as the original. You know, tweaking, adding some extra sounds. You know, um, um, beefing up the groove. Mm-hmm. You know, things mm-hmm. like that. You know, just adding things to it and boom. So I left it. So the next time Nato came to the studio, I told you that guy, listen to this. When he heard it, he was like, wow, he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, well. <laughs> And that was it. So yeah. he now said, I, they now said, oh, you would like to put the, the band, band on, on, on the track. When he played it for the band, the band loved it. Yeah, and that was how and it was. And the band killed the ring. Yeah, yeah, he did. He That's did. cool. He did. Well, this, I'm really glad that you were like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got to hear from the horse's mouth. Um, now, going to Dari, mm. how do you, because you created, the, um, you produced um, Dari's mm. Carry Legal. Mm-hmm. What was, how, was, how did that come about? Um... 
Dari is a music man to start with, you know. So Dari most times has um, an idea of what he wants. You know, he might not be able to. It might not be a perfect type of idea, but he has an idea of what he wants. Um, at the time, we we're not just working on that song; we we're working on, a, on an entire album. So we were just recording songs, recording songs, and um, um, Carry the Go. How to Carry the Go? I think I, I, I think I made the beat first too for Carry the Go. I think that's what happened, um, and he vibed on it. Most of the things I've done have been a function of good vibing mm. in the studio. You know, you just you know. So he vibed on it and I think we came up with the chorus first, then he had to go and write the verses. Okay. Um yeah. Yeah, okay. that was how it was. And then, okay, we had the song finished mm-hmm. bef- oh, wait till oh, what am I saying? Yeah, no. Oh. I think I think Two Face was in the studio at the time. Okay. I think it was Daria and Two Face. Because it's Daria and Two Face yeah. 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 So they're in the studio yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah, I think I think that's what it was. Ah oh, man, I can't remember but exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to get yeah, the correct. To get story. The correct. <laughs> but <laughs> at least you know you were yeah. able to think for But yeah. I, I, I don't know. I can't remember Sasha, but it's one of those two. Yeah. Okay. Two what about Sasha's Adara? Mm, Sasha P. <laughs> yeah, cuz that really Sasha P, Sasha P yeah, it came to Abuja yeah. then cuz okay. those productions were things I did in Abuja. Okay. She came to Abuja. I think she came for about a week or two weeks and we were working a couple of songs. And it was um, she was on that storm records then. Mm-hmm. So Ubi Asika had mm-hmm. sent her to come to, to Abuja, and um, we're vibing. Yeah, we're vibing. I think the chorus came first. You know, in fact, when she did that Shara Giri or my Adara, I'm like, this girl, man, you're not an Ajabota at all. Your Yoruba is conk. What? <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it was nice, and the storyline was very nice. You know, because you know, Sasha is one of those people that you know she believes in girl power. Mm-hmm. You know, she women she believes that yeah, women empowerment, and you know, and it's a very good song. It's a song that you know, you can still it's still relevant mm-hmm. till now. You know, talking about things, it, pretty much her story. You know, mm-hmm. pretty much her story. You know, but also. Letting people know that you can do it, you know, mm-hmm. you know, like things gonna be all right. Yeah, you know. That's true. Hmm. Cool. Now, three more songs that you know I just like. One of the next one is Natural Something by Sound Sultan. Okay, <laughs> so Natural Something by Sound Sultan. Mm-hmm. Uh, we came into the studio. I did ah Sultan, fantastic guy, <laughs> fantastic guy. He wrote that song eh, by drawing. Are you serious? Yes. He didn't write down a word. He was drawing. And I was looking at him and I was like, guy, what are you doing? He not said explain the drawing to me. So you see this guy, eh? he's this, uh, nah, 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 nah. see this sunlight, he's that, blah, 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 blah. That's how, he, that's how he wrote that song. Wow. The guy is strange. <laughs> like so Sometimes if you can hear me, eh, you're a spirit. <laughs> 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 you're strange, so man. Random. <laughs> Very random guy like wow. that. But you see, we had recorded the song and he liked the song i remember after we finished recording in the studio even before i mixed the song we we're all dancing in the studio mm. like he was dancing he was just happy ab- he was very happy about the song and um he took the song over a year before it became a hit song mm-hmm. it yeah it took it almost two years before it became a hit song you know, so this also goes out to people who think that you record a song now and the song is not a hit in two months and you begin to think that ah okay that's the end no it took almost two years because the video came out over a year after we had recorded it and that's when the boss started building yeah building yeah Yeah. and then what about 3310 nice hey adigun (laughs) adigun 3310 is very funny because i think we started recording in abuja then we completed it here in Lagos. Um, so it was one of those times when he came to Abuja and he came to my studio and we just started vibing. We just started vibing. Um, started vibing. See, it's difficult to write a song for nice because the guy, he's just full of words, man. He's full of lyrics. He's full of, you know, he can you know, but he, but he did very well. I was very interested in the. I was very interested when he came up with the chorus and said, ah, "I'm 33, 10, no yeah. go for." I'm like, "Ah, bobo, how far now?" <laughs> you know, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So, and, then the f- 
and then the final one is mm. um, Shay Shay's No Vacancy. Ah, how did that um, come that out? song? Yeah, uh, that's I such a that that's actually. such a huge song. Yeah, yeah. The song when you studio together with Sound Sultan, Sound Sultan wrote um, part of that song. Okay, and when you studio together and we just wanted something different, you know, something melodic, something very emotional as well, something. Um, we just wanted something different, and I, I think I started with the beat. Yeah, I started with the beat. I started with the chord progression, mm-hmm. actually. Then um, melodies came up. Then lyrics came up. Yeah. You know, but it was it was really the song. The song. I, I think we recorded the song maybe two years before. Wow. Yes. Before yes. Before the before she decided to put it on the album. Wow. Yes. Because when she was putting the album together, that's when she called me and said that, see, that song, yeah, everybody I play that song for, they mm-hmm. love that song, that song is... I'm like, okay, come to the studio. So we had to now re-record mm-hmm. some parts, mm-hmm. you know, and just make it nicer yeah. and things like that, you know. Well, and that, that, that's to tell you that, see, songs are timeless. If you, yeah, that. timeless, yes, timeless, yes. timeless. Definitely. The same thing with School Your Face. School Your Face was over a year, mm-hmm. you know, and... And it's still relevant. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, up and coming artists and you know and producers who are listening, you know, begin to understand the value of creating timeless songs and not just yeah. saying that oh, you want to create a song that has to magma to magma, you know, create yeah. a good record and yeah. hopefully time is like. <laughs> yeah, and I feel that sometimes uh, artists and even producers, up and coming, everybody wants to be. Everybody, they're all in a hurry. You know, mm-hmm. everybody wants to be famous. Mm-hmm. Forget the fame. Be true to the art. Mm. You know, be true to the the. What what is what is real in this business? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not the fame. I feel like fame it comes and goes. Mm-hmm. There've been people who have been very famous in mm-hmm. the past, and you know <laughs> where are they right true. now? You know, but just be true to the act. Uh, fame, money, and the rest of mm-hmm. it are additions. True. You know, add-ons to yeah. to the real thing. Good advice, Eli. Thank huh? you. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. So, as a producer, hmm. do you think that it's important to? know how to play an instrument Mm -hmm. why it helps your interpretation Mm -hmm. Mm, it gives you more it gives you um it gives you room to be able to express yourself you Mm -hmm. know musically you know to be able to express yourself in a much much you know in a it just gives you room to express yourself really Mm -hmm. you know let me not speak too much (laughs) (laughs) now i always Excuse me, I always ask a lot of people that I talk to, mm. even be, some, some of them have come on the show, is mm. do you think that there's a difference between a music producer and a beat maker? Yes, I think so. What do you think is the difference? A producer is interested in the entire process. Mm. From the beat making to the vocals to the melodies to the songwriting the to, the mi- to the arrangement to the mixing. Mm-hmm to what it sounds like at the end to everything mm-hmm. you know the producer is part of that process mm-hmm. he might not be the one to do everything but he's present and his input is final <laughs> you understand all, yeah. all of that process but a beat maker will just make the beat and give to you and he doesn't care what you sing over it he doesn't even care whether you you know as long as he's happy with what you do at the end of the day you know he doesn't care it doesn't have to necessarily be part of the process. Now, do you think cause some people say that they ha- they have an issue with the fact that a lot of producers in Nigeria now, some of them that we're calling producers, music producers, aren't necessarily music producers; they're mm. more beat makers. Mm. Do you share that same sentiment? Well, um, yes, I do because some of them take glory for what they're not supposed to take glory for. You know, if you're a beat maker, stick to it. <laughs> do you understand? And if you're a producer. Um, then do what do the needful, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you see, like it is in Nigeria, the industry is still is still growing, and a lot of things are not yet in place. Mm-hmm. Even a lot of terms and terminologies. Mm-hmm. Take for instance, I don't know how. Um, in London, for instance, uh, or in Europe, they see all of Nigerian music as Afrobeats. I was going to ask you that to yourself. You yeah. know, for me, is is 
you can't call it. And guess what? This thing started from somebody. It's probably just one person that decided to say, oh, uh, Afrobeat, Afrobeat, mm-hmm. what's that? And everybody is doing Afrobeat mm-hmm. in, Af- in Nigeria. So everything you, that comes out of Nigeria, they classify it as Afrobeat. It's not true. So what would you classify it as? I'd rather put it as maybe we call it something just the same way the movie industry decided to call the, in, the industry Nollywood. Mm-hmm. You know, call it something, call it s- sounds of Nigeria or <laughs> solid, call it something. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. And within that sounds of Nigeria, you have a uh, pop music, mm-hmm. you have songs that that have their influences from Afro mm-hmm. beats, you have songs that have their influences from high life, you have your Fuji, Abba, like Jonathan, yeah, yeah. so you can yeah. actually have gospel, mm-hmm. you can actually have everything mm-hmm. different, mm-hmm. you know, uh, groups like that, you know. Um, and I think that's the same thing that, hap- that is happening with producers and beat makers mm-hmm. calling themselves producers, mm-hmm. because everybody just sees, see themselves as behind the scene, mm-hmm. why the guys behind the scene producers? Mm. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, uh, but with time, I think everything will begin to yeah. like. Just for instance, now there's some guys who will tell you that they're just mixing engineers. They are not even mastering engineers. Mm. You know, they will just tell you straight. Exactly. I will mix for you. Go and master somewhere True. else. You know. Identifying and knowing your strong yeah. Point. So eventually, when people begin to identify their strong mm-hmm. points, they will mm-hmm. begin to tag that st- mm-hmm. that strong point, the real tag. Yeah. You know, Hopefully. give it that real tag. I feel I, I'm yet to see people in Nigeria in the creative industry who you say, oh, T.Y. is an actor and T.Y. says, no, I'm not an actor. I'm a just strictly a producer. But people tend to just accept everything. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. yes, mm-hmm. I'm an actor. Mm-hmm. Like, you want to just mm-hmm. take all the glory. Mm-hmm. Like, what's wrong mm-hmm. in you mm-hmm. correcting and setting the record mm-hmm. straight? Like, oh, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. act. Mm-hmm. You know, I strictly produce. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't, I'm just a beat maker. Mm-hmm. I'm not a music mm-hmm. producer. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, I'm just a vocal arranger. Exactly. You know. Like, because those are, we, we need those people that mm-hmm. do those types of jobs. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I don't know. But um, but yeah, thank you for talking about that. Now, in terms of music, movie production, you know, nice segue. Um, <laughs> in 2012, you produced the soundtrack for the movie Journey to Self, right? Mm-hmm, what mm-hmm. was that? In, can you talk about the production process? Mm, for that, that was Ashanye's. Uh, Ashanye yes. was. Um, mm-hmm. I think she was producing the movie. Yeah, you know. Ashanye instead yeah. of the movie. Um, it was actually Ashanye that approached me and said because I'd done some recordings for her before, mm-hmm. previously, and she felt like I could express the ideas she had mm-hmm. you know for the movie musically and um when she approached me, i was like oh cool nice you yeah. know at the time i just um done a course on uh, a course on um what's it called sound design for movies okay. you know so it was very interesting to mm. me so i wanted to do it and it turned out well you know we had people like um Harry songs actually i listened to them <laughs> yeah <laughs> harry yeah. song sang yeah. some of the songs um uh, Peter, Peter sings. Uh, I think her husband, her husband was also on one of the songs. Was he? Her husband. Is it who's Carl? Sang? Carl, yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Carl, Carl, Carl yeah. recorded or mm-hmm. sang mm-hmm. on one of the tracks, and a few other people. Cool. There's one lady called Amina. Uh, it was nice. Yeah. It was was a very good experience. Now, what was the difference in terms of music production? Um, like, <coughs> just working with artists and doing. It's music. different because you're trying to. With movies, it's more about the emotions you evoke. Mm-hmm. Well, even with music production, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. But we see with the Nigerian music in, um, industry, most times you want to ev- evoke happy emotions. emotions. You know, mm-hmm. happy, feel good, because we are fatty loving people. Right? <laughs> jai, jai people like, we don't want to worry about yeah. recession or worry about anything. You know, I, I, I pray there's no recession because I went to the mall yesterday <laughs> and I'm like, well, where's the recession? <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know, mm. we just want to have a good time. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so. A lot of Nigerian music tend towards Happy. to cater to that upbeat. Uh, upbeat type of thing. But you see, when it comes to movie soundtracks and you know mood music mm-hmm. like that, you know, there's so many emotions you have to consider, and that sometimes can be very challenging because mm-hmm. you have to know the right sound, you have to know the right chord progressions, mm-hmm. you have to know the right melodies, you have to, you know, is. It's Drum, a mix of yeah. a lot of things. So do you find yeah. that you definitely find that more challenging than? Yes, yeah. I do. Okay, and did you have to watch the movie before you did the production? Uh, no, I, I read the script. Okay, so I knew what the story was about. Mm-hmm. Um, then, um, I think. Yeah, I knew what the story was about. Then I saw some of the, um, what's it called, some of the rushes. Okay, because I was about know, to say yes. that some people, some people. Yes, see, yeah. I saw some of the okay. rushes. You know. And okay, like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. The stuff <laughs> is real. Okay, yeah. 
you know, this kind of slap that will leave you with a black eye. <laughs> 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 okay. We'll make the... Uh, we'll make the <laughs> <song>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you have yeah. to... Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what I had to ask. Some people mm. like... Uh, you know, when you see, like, there's a part where, well, you, you know, there's a difference between crying and weeping. Mm-hmm. That's uh-huh, you know, so when you see black like, or oh, more, this baby they cry on a <laughs> weep. Uh-huh. So you have to yeah. find a sound that mm. you know, can carry capture that, that capture that emotion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Mm. Cool. Thank you for taking us through that you know, experience. <laughs> now, from a creative standpoint, yeah. what is your take on sampling, and do you believe that it takes away from a producer's credibility? Well, I don't think so. Why is that? It depends on how you sample and. Um, it depends on um you can be creative about it okay. you know there are certain songs i've heard and i know where the original came from mm-hmm. but i still appreciate the effort of the guy who has redone it mm-hmm. you know so i think it's about how creative you are mm-hmm. you know um i don't think there's anything wrong with it you just have to get the proper rights yeah you know, for it. yeah do you feel like yeah. a lot of nigerian producers get the clearance and the r- license to sample from? i don't think so I don't and think so. And why do you think they don't do? Why do you think that they don't even care? To because none of them has been arrested yet. <laughs> it's true now. <laughs> by the time it's that, yeah. this is truth. Mm-hmm. You know, by the time most of these guys are not paying attention to it. Most of the guys they sample from mm-hmm. are not paying attention to it yet. Yeah. By the time they start paying attention to it mm-hmm. and start filing lawsuits mm-hmm. and things like mm-hmm. that, hey, you'll be more careful mm-hmm. now, and you know how to go and seek for permission before you use someone exactly. else's because yeah. I feel like even with Nigerian producers some of Nigerian producers in Nigeria they also mm. sample some Nigerian songs yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like old songs yeah and I'm like did you get the clearance and the license to don't sample worry. Hey, well, <laughs> yeah, <don't> <laughs> 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 now, do, you, do you sample as for a music producer um I I I don't think so. If I have mm. maybe once or twice, or you know, it's not my thing. Mm-hmm. It's not my thing. Yeah. But sometimes you borrow, you know, like I might not sample exactly, but I might listen to something mm-hmm. similar. Mm-hmm. Take for instance, if I want to do like a a high life song mm-hmm. now, I might listen to high life music from the sixties. Mm-hmm. You know, whoever yeah, it was, was back then, the back yeah. in the days, so I would listen to it and probably, okay, what elements, you know, then mm-hmm. I'll create mine, mm-hmm. you know. So, it, mm, I don't necessarily, like, sample, like, lift mm-hmm. from, you know. Okay. Now, who are your music production influences? People that have, inf- you know, influenced how you produce music. Mm. They change with time. You know, I remember when I started out, you know, Dark Child was, mm, you know, I really, yeah, really liked yeah. him, you know, because he did a lot of things with Brandy then. Yes. You know, ah, yes. I'm Brandy, I know. <laughs> I think the love I have for Tiwa Savage is an extension of the love I've always been. had for Brandy. Really? Yes. Because, oh my God, I still love that lady. Like, I think she's just super, super, super yes. creative. You know, the way she laces her vocals, you know, her melodies, yeah. her harmonies. Oh God. It's just you know so uh, yeah Dark Child was it at some point uh, Dr Dre was it at some mm-hmm. point um, what was it that you loved about Dr I mean, about, about Dre Dre yeah I just like the way he made he had a, he made hip hop interesting mm. you know he's the guy who add piano sounds to a hip hop track <laughs> you know he had that repetitive. He had very interesting loops, mm. you know, that mm. I liked. Um, and, you know, what he did with Eminem was, you know, <laughs> John, John <laughs> so you can't, you, you just have to like yeah. it. <laughs> you know, then at some point it was um, um, Timbaland. You know, like, of course. Like, <laughs> yes. I, I, I like there's no one. Like, <laughs> yeah. Timbaland, his mm-hmm. percussions yes. are just out of this world. Ah, a guy. Ah, Baba, yeah, a legend, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, his percussions, he will make a slow song sound, his groove, his groove were just so thick and heavy. You know when you're, you have to bounce. Yeah, yeah. You have yeah. to just, you know, so I liked, I liked that. Um, but I, I really appreciate people like um, Michael Jackson's producer. Mm-hmm. You know, when you want to take, take it back, 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 yeah. way back, you know, Quincy Jones. Because I think he did an amazing job with Michael. Like, mm-hmm. you know, till now, we still make references to... Even when you talk about sampling. Like, mm-hmm. I listen to... Um, I still listen to tracks by Michael Jackson. And I get inspirations mm-hmm. from it. Like, it might just be something very little. It might be one riff. It might be one guitar riff mm-hmm. or something. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think those guys were very deep. Mm-hmm. They were very deep at the time. You know, so, yeah. yeah cool. It changes with time. Nice. The albums did you appreciate in 20... Uh, two. Did you appreciate in 2016? 
Well, um, Life of Pablo was one. Mm. Even though I felt like, you know, you know, Baba sometimes. Yeah, you know. Like, <laughs> you know, really, though, like, I, I struggle with that. Baba, Baba sometimes, you know. Yeah. Then I liked uh, Lemonade. Mm, yes, that was I like really, them. Yes. Yeah, I, when I listened to the entire album, I was like, initially I didn't get it. Mm. To be honest mm-hmm. with you, I didn't understand the album. I was like, okay, what's happening here? You know, the sound. It was very different. Mm-hmm. You know, but over time, you know, I started you know appreciating. appreciating like, okay, even the creative process. You know, the way they were able to tweak things a bit. You mm-hmm. know. Um, and it's a lot of work for someone like Beyonce, you know, with number of albums and number of songs that she had had to work on in her entire music career. You know, sounding fresh would be a lot of challenge for them. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know how they do it, but I'm sure they will probably have maybe like different songwriters, different producers, yeah, different, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and pick different elements and yeah. tell people, and maybe even pick people from <laughs> different. Um, um, uh, what's it called? Geographic yeah, regions, regions. Yeah. You know, so that you're influenced by sounds in that area and that region and things like that. And, and put yeah. everything together. There was a video I saw of the that um, Run the World video. Yeah. She she flew some guys from I think some African country to teach yeah, her. But that was a cho- uh, choreography. You know? Yeah, but I'm just yeah. saying that it's also going back to yeah. what you said. I think from different yeah, places. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Now, can you talk about your record label, Vivachi Records? Well, Vivacha Records, like well, like you know, is a record label. Mm-hmm. Uh, we started in 2014, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, I have um, Immaculate mm-hmm. Unicardi, I be mm-hmm. Josh on the label, and um, uh, well, it's a young label. You know, we're trying to f- carve our own niche. Why did you even choose to start a record label? Why did I choose to start a record label? Because over time, for me, it's about giving back, really. That's the reason why I started Record Label. Uh, because I've met a lot of fantastic, you know, young artists, you know, or aspiring artists, or people who want to, you know, find a way to thrive in the music business. You know, and it's very difficult. The truth is, the way the industry is set up right now, no matter how talented you are, if you don't have a platform, if you don't have a support system, is I'm not going to say it's impossible because I still believe in miracles, you know, but... <laughs> It's going to be really tough for you to be able to, you know, for your dreams to become reality. Mm-hmm. So it was based on that that, you know, I decided to start up a record label. Okay. And yeah. What challenges have you faced in starting a record label ah, in Nigeria? Oh, my, there's a lot. Too. <laughs> Do you <laughs> tell us? There's a, bit a about lot. Those? I'll just tell you, I'll just Two. mention a few, maybe mm. like 25. <laughs> 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 I said to you, <laughs> <laughs> no, but but really, one of the major challenges is funding. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The other part of it is, unlike every other type of business, you know, you you can predict where you're getting your revenue from or where you're getting your income your income from. If you invest ten naira, you know how you're going to make twelve naira. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know at what point will you start making twelve naira. But you see, in the music business here in Nigeria, nothing is certain. You can you can keep investing for five years before you make yeah. money <laughs> you understand and and it's capital intensive you know to produce a song it takes an average of an average of between four to six million naira for you to produce and promote one song one song yes i was even going to say that initially i thought it was mm-hmm. like just based on my experience like maybe like one to two now it's four to six when was that that was, uh, I think that was yeah, when dollar yeah, was yeah, that's something, yeah. 45 naira. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, yeah. but, but, just but really, it's, it's the truth. To, yeah, it's coming yeah. to what you said about how, if you want to get the most impact, mm. get your songs out there. Mm-hmm. I, I, I mm-hmm. mean, that's, that's definitely... Yeah, important. you know, so if you want to do that, especially for a new artist, mm. it's more difficult that's because true. you don't have... You don't... No clout around mm-hmm. you yet. You know, you don't have a huge following. You don't have... You know, even people who want to... As an A-list artist, some people by default want to um, um, want to grant favors, you know, you know, because they want to associate themselves with you in one way or the other. Mm-hmm. But you see, for a new artist, you don't you don't enjoy all of that, so it's more difficult, and you have to spend more money. Yeah. Um, then um, expectations and demands from artists as well, expectations from 
um even even the society <laughs> you understand? It's, yeah. it's quite it's quite challenging you have to be sure what you're doing yeah. before now on the flip side with the lack of structure we have in, mm. in you know in the nigerian music industry do you think that that's helped you be more strategic and has ha- allowed you to think outside the box in terms of how you approach either promotion for immaculate not really you know? I, I don't think it has made you think made me think outside the box because even the pros- what you see as thinking outside the box I still things have been done somewhere else mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know it's just um i think it's not even a lack of structure i think is the market that has even made me not necessarily think outside the box but tweak some things you know mm-hmm. um, um on how i've been able to strategize in terms of marketing and promotions um the lack of structure just gives you little to work with so you just have to find a way to work within that little. You don't really need to think outside the box. Is um, I don't think that's a strategy. Mm-hmm. It just it just gives you very little to work yeah. with, and you know you just um, try and see how you can maximize and leverage on whatever it is that you yeah. have. Mm. Okay. Now, obviously, you're a TY mix, and just no, <laughs> I'm P square. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me. I like, see. I like really like that. <laughs> <laughs> like that's insult my kind of insult my segue. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> now, Ty, oh, do you yes. have a manager? Yes, I do. Do you have an accountant? Accountant? Um, no. Why? Why? Yeah. Um. I don't have a separate accountant, but I have someone who doubles as you okay. know, an accountant. Oh, yeah. okay. You know, and most times I go through my books myself. Okay. You know, because I I don't run a complicated setup yet, mm. so I know how to mm-hmm. like monthly. I know how to do my invoices and everything. Mm-hmm. It's not it's not exactly very complicated yet, mm-hmm. but I believe when it becomes complicated, yeah. I might require the service of a dedicated accountant. Okay. Do you have a lawyer? Yes, I do. Okay, so I have two. Yeah, yeah. I ask that question because a lot of, a lot of people don't really realize mm-hmm. the importance of a manager, a lawyer, an accountant. It's important. And it's, yeah, it's especially with contracts that you have to. It's very very important. Okay. Now, um, quickly, um, wrapping up the legal and business section, do mm. you have a publishing deal? Yes, I do have a publishing deal. And do you mind talking about the that the the deal? Who's it? Who's um? Well, you know, there are a couple of publishing companies yeah, springing up in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, and um, you know, you know, like like um. Like rightly said initially, the music industry here is growing. Mm-hmm. You know, is is developing. Mm-hmm. You know, so people are beginning to specialize on different aspects of mm-hmm. things. You know, take for instance, Coson. You heard of Coson yeah. before? Coson, we cater to mostly they cater to the artists. Mm-hmm. They don't cater to the guys behind the scene. Mm-hmm. They don't cater to the creative guys. Mm-hmm. They don't cater to you know, and. Um, so some other people have seen that gap. that gap mm-hmm. and decided to say, okay, see, let's start a publishing company that will cater to these guys yeah. or cater to those other guys, and you know, um, and yeah. So I'm 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 signed on that publishing company, and um, does it have a name? It's not been um, they've not been very effective yet, mm-hmm. you know. But you see, all these things give give you time. time. Give it because time. I know that there's five music. It'll get better. Yeah, there's five music. music and there's, then there's um, green light. Just there's green light. Yeah. Yes, there's green light. Uh, yeah. that I'm, I'm signing on that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Let me. Yeah, with time, everything is like you know. Yeah. With baby steps, with time, it's, it's 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 it'll get better. Yeah. It'll get better. It'll get better. We, 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 we are not where we used to be five years true. ago. True. Very you true. Know, and it, it can only get better. Yeah. I mean, it would be nice to like see you know green light help you exploit all your yeah, work. So, and yeah, so, make yeah, so, money yeah, so, yeah, so, money beyond production. A memo, a memo, sister. Yeah, I'm ready for you, man. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're gonna wrap it up with the four yeah. random questions. Okay. okay? What do you like to do for <coughs> fun outside of working on music? I like to watch movies, man. Oh, what, what, what was I the like last to movie? watch movies. I like to watch series. What was the I last movie you saw? Last movie I saw. What was this? Uh, um, what was this? Uh, Invictus? No, 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 oh. no, 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 Invictus. I've never seen yeah. that one. No. Sorry, Invictus is the name uh, of my perfume. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with my head today. Don't worry, it's not my time. It's not my time. No worries. Have you seen Deadpool? 
No, I haven't. I finally saw that. It was actually I really haven't. good. I pretty, pretty good. I haven't. You should see it. Okay, I will. So okay. I'm, trying, I'm still okay, trying what, to remember. Yeah, what movie. series have you seen recently? Recently? Yeah. I've been doing a lot of Modern Family. Okay. I don't, I don't really get the bad Are you serious? Sorry. Do you know, like, I really, really like it. What I like about it is... is, is, is it's very realistic. Mm. It's very it's like an everyday life mm-hmm, type of thing. Mm-hmm. Even the production itself, you know, you don't have a lot of like no, no uh, uh, background Lutter. music, no extra sound effects, nothing. You know, it's like someone just carrying one single it's camera and moving up and down. Yeah. You know, and what I really like about it too is also the dialogue. The dialogue is very funny. Mm. If you if you pay attention, maybe to it, you maybe like maybe, it. maybe yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now. Um, if you can come up with if you can come up with one habit that could possibly destroy a person's career, what would do you think that would be? Such a random question. But pride. Pride. Uh-huh. Hmm. Pride is very any career. Yeah. You are either a musician, a lawyer, a whatever you mm-hmm. are in life. You know, I think pride. Hmm. Uh. That is that little yeah, pride is very bad. Yeah, because what I feel like I feel like pride repels you from other people mm-hmm. and you cannot exist in this world alone mm-hmm. you need people sure. you know so by the time you start repelling a repel b repel c you find that you're alone mm-hmm. at some point mm-hmm. and you c- what can you do by yourself sure. no, no <laughs> man's an island no man's an island sure. so yeah. okay now decide you have to pick one lagos or abuja for the rest of your life ah <laughs> For the rest of your life, you have to... Okay, this is... Uh, uh, assuming that... Okay, let me talk like a mathematician. <laughs> uh, um, uh, assuming that all other factors yes, are equal, yes, be, yes, uh, whatever. Yes, okay. all that good stuff, yeah. How much Abuja? Are you serious? Ah! ah! Hey! <laughs> we are taking you back to Abuja. Ah, Emalo, Abuja, Emalo. Abuja. Ah. <laughs> okay. Um, why is it Abuja? See, uh, in Lagos, uh, you have wrinkled face very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you age. <laughs> I feel like Lagos ah. people are very mean sometimes. The, stre- the stress uh, oh is so my much. Oh, my gosh. In Lagos, everybody's chasing. I don't know what everybody's chasing. Drive everybody's like Everybody's in a hurry. It's, I don't understand. Yeah, like, I agree. I personally feel like the quality of life, life. in Lagos yeah. cannot be. The hustle in Lagos is real. Yeah. Like, I really, I feel like everybody before you're 30, you need to come and experience Lagos mm-hmm. for at least one or two mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. It toughens you up. Mm-hmm. It's like New York City, mm, sure. you know, where, you know, you have to be able to hustle. You have to be able to, because life is not as easy as an Abuja set up mm-hmm. or painted mm-hmm. sometimes, you know. But mm-hmm. you see, I'm a, Abuja is the place, so. Okay, yeah. well, <laughs> fried rice or jello fries? <laughs> yeah, take that again. Fried rice or jello fries? Fried rice or I heard you now. Let me I, think I, I, now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I, I feel like it's like this is like no, oh. no. I'm thinking about it because both of them. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, my favorite is white rice and stew. Are you serious? Uh, you know, but if I have to do Pink, fried rice or jollof, I will do jollof rice. Why would you do jollof rice? Because I feel like fried rice gets spoiled easily true so sometimes you might not know the fried rice that is already going slightly mm, off when yeah. you go to a restaurant mm, to eat mm-hmm. you know it's been there for hours mm-hmm. and you don't know the one that is going off or that the veggies is going yeah. off and you gotta eat it and you have, have run it uh, uh, you know but jollof rice can be very safe like okay jollof rice is like can stay a whole day true <laughs> okay if you have to decide between native attire or suit hmm well, time, time native. Native, why? Yeah. Um, because it's easy to wear, hmm. you know, but stylishly done. No? I don't yeah. want uh, booba. <laughs> <laughs> so stylish. And I wear a lot of it, you yeah. know. It's easy. Once you put the, wear the pants, wear the yeah. top, you are good to go. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it's just smooth. Okay, mm. cool, cool. What is your favorite food? White rice, stew, and plantain. You know, I was telling someone that when I try to eat rice mm. without plantain, mm. something just feels like it's missing. It's almost like a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> plantain. Like I, uh, uh, like I plantain. try. Hey. Like, <laughs> like if I can't get plantain, uh, I have to use a banana or something. White rice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. White rice, stew, plantain. I think pomo. Oh, pomo. Mm. Mm. Pomo cool. that have soaked stew very well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very, very, you know, you're about, you're about food. Yes, so. <laughs> All right, finally, what do you read or watch to stay on top of your craft as a music producer? Hmm. I, 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 I check, I go online randomly. Mm. Like, I check, ran- my favorite, one of the things I do most of the time online is YouTube. I can be on YouTube for 
for hours. Mm-hmm. You know, I just check for random things, yeah. news, what's popping, why is it popping, mm-hmm. who is doing mm-hmm. what. Then I like to check blogs, like mm-hmm. different blogs, because um, I. I don't like to read a lot of things. Once I see too many letters, mm-hmm. you know, it, I like short, short stories. Mm-hmm. Short, short, okay, this has happened, okay, that has happened, okay, yeah, I like that. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm online most of the time. I think the best thing that's happened to my life is the internet. Mm. Google is the best thing that's happened to <laughs> me. Like, trust I think me. It's like, best for ah, like, it just makes, and, and I'm, I'm very inquisitive. When I watch something and there's something I, I don't know about, I quickly check. Mm. You know, if there's a word mm-hmm. or something, I quickly check, exactly. you know. So yeah, I just. Now? Wrap it up by asking, what should we expect from you in 27? You talked about you're not, you're not for Tiwa Savage. Is it possible that you're you know going to be producing a record with her this year? Yeah, it would be nice to actually. I've never done anything with her before. You yeah. know, yeah, I'll work towards that. But most definitely, there's going to be more music. Mm. More, more okay. music, a lot m- more music. What I'm doing is I'm working with a couple of um, songwriters. Okay. You know, so what we're doing is... We're just going to be recording materials and see how we can fish out artists that can be on it. So I can call up a Tiwa Savage, for mm-hmm. instance, and say, oh, I have an idea for you. Mm-hmm. So I'm not just going to offer you a beat, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say, okay, I have an idea for you. What do you think? Do you like it? Yes. Okay. No. Okay. Let's tweak it like this. Mm-hmm. But there's going to be a lot more recording mm-hmm. from me okay. in 2017. Cool. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you're still doing the uh, the Jazz Project thing? With Hopefully. Yeah. And how is that? For what is that, you know? No, no, what is that experience? How, how, how much how have you enjoyed it? Because obviously you've been there for a while. I love it. I love it because um, it is, it, it is new every single mm-hmm. time, you know, because um, um, the dynamism of it is the fact that you're working with human beings, mm-hmm. different talents, mm-hmm. different emotions, different temperaments, mm-hmm. you know, and um, people improve at different points. You know, the pace is different. Yeah. You know, for A, in two weeks, it might become, it might just transform, boom. Mm. For B, you know, some people, you don't even know how good they are till towards the end of the show. Sure. You know, you just think that, okay, they are luckily scaling through to the next week, luckily scaling through. Like by the time it's like the ninth week out of 11, mm-hmm. you just realize that, you know, someone busts out. Yeah. You know, in their full elements. You know, it's, so it's quite good. It's yeah. quite rewarding for me as well because I get to watch these guys start from raw talent, mm-hmm. and you know, the refining process it's is right. is very rewarding right, for yeah. me. Yeah, I like it. That's cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yannis, thank you for, for having time. me. Thank I you. really had thank a great you. time. Thank you. I, I, I must say that this is one of the most intelligent. Oh, thank interviews you. I've had. Thank you. Know, you it's it's quite that. nice. You've asked me questions that you know. Um, questions I've had to think about before I answer. I'm glad because I know you're mm-hmm. saying that, you, you don't do now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't do now. <laughs> but you know, I'm glad that you know they would allow you to think. Cause mm-hmm. Again, the purpose of the podcast is to, <coughs> excuse me, mm-hmm. educate and inform people and mm-hmm. let people also get to know the people behind the scenes. And Thank you are you. one of the top producers in Nigeria, and I'll be remiss not to ask you all these questions. Thank so you very much. I apologize for, you know, battering okay. you too much. No, 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 no problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thank no you problem. so much, Tiwa, and thank you so thank much, you. everyone, for listening. Oh, I forgot to ask, if people want to um, know how to keep in touch with you, can oh, you Oh, okay, them know? yeah. Um, my social media handle is, um, okay, Instagram is at official. Okay. Mix is spelled T-W-E-Y-M-I-X okay. official. Okay. Um, Twitter is um, TYMix of no ty mix at ty mix for okay. twitter okay. um then you can facebook, facebook i think it's at ty mix as well i think it was, uh, yeah. at ty mix as well but ty mix is always spelled as t w e y m i x and once you type that into yeah. google like you just leave yeah, yeah you, you see all it, my yeah. you know cool. yeah. so you can reach me and um i think i do pretty Inter- well that, yeah. yeah i interact <laughs> pretty well yeah, so better than me. you know you can slide into my dms <laughs> yes, and, right, right. You know, i'm gonna reply you <laughs> slide into the dms <laughs> 2017 goal yeah <laughs> well thank you so much ty thank had a lovely you, time Shady. Thank um, you. thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Be back for um, I thought I think it's going to be episode five with another awesome producer in the studio with me. Um, till then, talk to you later. Bye. To ensure that you don't miss subsequent episodes, you can follow us on our various social media handles. On Twitter, we are at the SNC Podcast. So that's T H E S N C Podcast. So the SNC Podcast. On SoundCloud, you can find us at the SNC SNC Show. So that's T H E S N C Show. 
on Instagram, we also are at the SNC show handle. For those who would like to reach out to me by email, my email is shadenonconformist at gmail.com or shadenonconformist at yahoo.com. Alternatively, you can follow me on Twitter at shadenonconform. Till next week, bye.